So I guess I better continue with the, the lathe. Now, on the lathe upgrade, what I got was a Tico L510. It's a 220 volt input single phase. So, after the bowl blow out, I knew I needed uh, parts and that's kind of why I stopped on the lathe because I did a material takeoff and I realized, okay, I need wire, I need boxes, I need switch, I need uh, a few things. So I went to Home Depot uh, and picked up the things that I thought I would need. And I bought basically eight feet of four conductor, uh, 12 gauge wire. Only bought eight feet. And the reason why I only brought 8 feet is because this is only going from my VFD. I got a diagram. Thanks. By default. So, technically, I only needed two wires here and the ground. But I bought enough wire to do both. So, what I will do is I will snip one of the uh, colors, the white. I will use the black, the red and the green to the ground but for the other side which is to the motor supply I will need the green ground which loops up on the chassis of the VFD I will need the red, the black and the white so that's why I got the 8 feet so as the diagram shows the diagram shows the L1, L2 is blanked out, you can see that, and L3. That's the three power sources coming into the VFD, or the two hot leads coming into the VFD, and the ground wire is on this chassis over here, earth ground. And then these three will be going to the motor. Now the motor will start off winding in uh, a direction as soon as you do the power up. If it's going in reverse, all you do is flip-flop any of these wires and will go in the rotation that is indicated by the default on the thing. And you can still go in here and change its rotation, but you want to start it off on the right rotation. You should, the motor should start going forward when you click this on because by default it's on a forward motion so you reverse one of these any of these two wires on this sequence over here and that will re uh, reverse the rotation as well so the first thing I want to do is I want to get my wire prepped and do this hook up cut this wire down to size so it reaches from this to the motor and the rest will be for a switch. Now what I'm thinking of doing on this is mounting this on the door itself because I will not be using the functions on this box itself. I will be using an external controller to do the forward reverse, the pod for the speed and the tachometer and that I might set it up somewhere underneath here or even further away where I'm not in the line of fire if something goes wrong and I need to shut off the, the late quit. Can do it with just the shut off switch as well. Now I gotta just get enough clearance on this and I can't have it in a position that would be in the way of my belts. So this is pretty much where I'm going to be mounting this. Now, I was thinking of mounting this the same way. I was thinking of putting it up here and cutting up the cabinet to this profile and have just this, just this profile visible 
in the front, but these wires are actually in the front of the panel, and I don't want these wires to go through here into the cabinet and into my other control switch. So I think that it will work out. Again, like I said, this does not need to be seen. So uh, I think that doing it inside, I could very well do it over here, but I like the idea of doing it on the door in case I need to do any maintenance to it, which I'll be right back. Right now I got a six foot cord coming from the L1 and L3. The L2 is omitted over here and the ground going into there. On the opposite side, which goes to the motor, we'll have all the four wires. The black, white, red, and the green to the ground. A little bit extra so I can wrap it around the uh, screw, the ground screw. The order that these wires go in really don't matter. Uh, it does matter, but uh, only to the the direction that the uh, motor might start off on you. So if it runs in reverse, all you have to do is reverse any of these uh, two wires. Any two wires. So that does it for this part. I'm not going to put the plug on this end until I get it through the cabinet. I don't want to end up with an oversized hole, even though there's a decent sized hole on the bottom. Let me check to see if my plug actually fits through that. Yes, and the wire does fit through the, uh, through the hole. So I'll be able to uh, put this in and get it started. And again, this plug only uses this end, only uses three wires as well. I should have bought a cheaper cable to do this with. This part. Only needed these four leads with. So, to recap, I got the green coming up to the green screw, which is your ground up to your uh, plug and the red and the black coming up to your terminals now there's a distinction as to why this is 220 it has a sideways prong rather than an upright which you cannot possibly plug this in into a 110 That's pinched in nicely, so that's not going anywhere. Uh, I feel I got a good, solid connection inside, and my plug is ready. This is ready to be plugged into a 220 outlet, which is not in the shed as of yet, but it will be very shortly. Grounds are good double checking all my connections and I will put a, uh, a zip tie on this to take off any pressure from the connections themselves.
Okay, so this is nice and tidy. Should not give me any issues whatsoever with this part of the uh, installation. Now, to the motor. Now, the motor can be a little intimidating because you see a lot of wires here. All you do is follow up the diagram on the top. It's showing me T4, T5, and T6 are wire nutted together. So I've already done that. They are labeled T5, T6, and the orange is T4. So these three wires, you don't do anything with them except isolate them, ground them, uh, I mean, bunch them up in one bunch. And I got some wire nut connectors as well. So that bunch right there, I don't want to confuse them again for anything else. They are pretty well together. It's a matter of wire nutting them and putting inside this house. Now I need to get my new wires going through here. So I'm going to bring this on for a short lead from the VFD going in through here and stripping it uh, to uh, give me that. So I'm going to strip it up long enough to make my connections. When you do this, don't cut too deep. All you do is score the rubber and the rest you just snap off. Like that. And these are a little bit on the short side, but the box is fairly small, so I don't want to bulk it up either. So that should be big enough or long enough to make my connections in there. And again, this is another area that you could uh, reverse the polarity inside these motors, so uh, inside the motor housing. So depending on how you have these, the black and the red wires will determine the direction that the motor uh, starts your travel on. So if it's going reverse, you can re reverse it here or on the VFD itself. Either one will give you the same results. Okay, so I got my four leads here, two hots, a neutral, and a, uh, a ground. And the ground, I will be bind binding it to the chassis right on one of these screws. Generally, your motor will come up with one green screw, which is for the ground itself. But on this case, I do not have one. So I have three leads here that are paired up. The directions tell you right here that T7 hooks up with T3. So, why not it? Oh, I gotta bring it to the bottom.
that's good. So I'll do the same thing for the next three groups. Oh, except my ground. Yes, don't want to forget the ground. Now, the next step, which is the actual mounting uh, of this, probably is the most challenging part. Because it's heavy, it's bulky, and got to work inside of a cap. That doesn't give you a lot of room. The bolt configuration might work out with my plate that I got in there, so I will have to check on it. And the whole configuration will work out fine. And my VFD from that location, where the wire is coming off the back, will also be fine. Okay, so the VFD is installed, it's wired up, the power, the power to the motor is ready, I am ready to put on my...